you know, responses to certain questions, whether it be on PPE or rapid testing. But as I mentioned in, in, my, in my lengthy uh, speech just now, there are serious problems with this motion which make it impossible for our government to move forward as proposed. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Hamilton Centre. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Just to recap, the Speaker did a phenomenal job uh, presenting reasons why she couldn't support this motion from her perspective. And I'll share from mine through you, Madam Speaker, some of the problems that are still outstanding with her rationale. Madam Speaker, you'll recall that at the outset of COVID, there was a drastic mishandling of the National Emergency Search Stockpile. We asked the Minister of Procurement, uh, who could have been responsible if it was their responsibility. They said no. It was the Minister of Health. So then we asked the Minister of Health. The Minister of Health, of course, would not take responsibility <laughs> for the fact that this government threw out millions of critical PPEs on the eve of a pandemic and still hasn't adequately accounted for that decision through you, Madam Speaker, to uh, the member opposite. Does the member opposite not believe that their government has a role and responsibility in ensuring that the critical protective personal equipment is provided to Canadians in a way that will help offset perhaps what could be a third wave coming down in the future? Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Procuring the necessary PPE for Canadians is an absolute priority of this government. We, we did transfer $19 billion to the provinces in, in part in order to ensure that they could procure and, and have access to the necessary PPE. And uh, with respect to, to my honourable colleague's question as to why a very specific issue cannot be studied, I would suggest that what we have before us is a 28-clause motion with 16 areas of study. Perhaps he could propose an area of study specific to what he is looking for so that we can, we can answer that specific question, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member... Uh, I don't have Deputy de Lac-Saint. The Honourable Member for Lac-Saint-Louis. Madam Speaker, my colleague raised a very good point that I had not thought of myself, and that is this. The information could undermine the government's negotiating position or bargaining position when it comes to vaccine manufacturers. So when these motions are drafted, and there's 28 clauses apparently in this uh, motion, but when we do draft motions, we have to think what we're actually asking in order to come up with something that will not uh, th undermine the country's interest. Thank you, Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank my colleague. Obviously, this is what concerns me at this moment. You know that there are many clients internationally who are trying to get the vaccine, and if Canada undermines its credibility and Canada starts to disclose confidential or sensitive company information, these providers will not want to deal with Canada, Madam Speaker. We must ensure that we can procure a COVID-19 vaccine for Canadians. The Honourable Member for Longueuil saint hubert Thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to thank my colleague for her speech. Like everyone, and she is very concerned about Canadians' health in the coming months. But what we hear is that the government could make this motion a one a confidence vote and then send Canada into an election. There are more cases. We learned today in Quebec, more deaths. Does my honourable colleague not think it is irresponsible in this time of a pandemic to send Canada into a general election, the honourable parliamentary secretary? I think no one wants an election, Madam Speaker. We all want to work here in the House in order to move forward measures that will be able to help Canadians. We have a number of bills. And we want to adopt these bills in the House. I agree with my colleague that it is not time for an election. Resuming debate. Debate of the Honourable Member for Caribou, Caribou Prince George. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, it's an honour to rise today. And, and Madam Speaker, I would like to inform you that I will be spl splitting my time with my Honourable Colleague from West Nova. Uh, Madam Speaker, we're here today because um, well, uh, we've got a great motion from uh, our colleague from Calgary Nose Hill, um, one that looks at uh, the COVID pandemic. Yesterday, we had a motion that, um, well, the government decided that it was a confidence motion and they didn't like what we had put forward. And, and um, 
Madam Speaker, nowhere and at no other time have we ever seen a group, an organization, a government work so hard at not answering a question or at, at not you know, providing the answers that Canadians deserve than we have seen over the last, last little while, Madam Speaker. A year ago, yesterday, Canadians put this Liberal government in notice. From previously enjoying a majority, they gave them a minority. And I have to say that since that minority a year ago took place, we've seen a Prime Minister that doesn't seem really interested in governing this country. He doesn't have a minority or a majority. Madam Speaker, we have not even seen a budget, a federal budget, for almost two years. Almost two years. And what we've seen time and time again is ethical scandals and ethical blunders from this Prime Minister and his cabinet. Canadians also were re-elected in a year ago, yesterday, a strong Conservative opposition with a clear mandate to hold this Liberal government to account. We were elected to ask the tough questions of this government, in which we do. Mr. Speaker, very seldom do we get answers. As a matter of fact, what we've seen time and again is they make every excuse as to why they can't answer this question. Just prior to this debate going on, we saw the Parliamentary Secretary stand on a point of order saying how hard it was going to be. It would paralyze the government, seize the government to try and answer these questions, Madam Speaker. So yesterday they didn't like the motion because they felt that it was questioning the government. They didn't like it. It wasn't COVID related. Now we have a, a conscientious, a measured motion that is directly related to the COVID pandemic and they don't like it. Can't do it. You know, I, I have to say that the last 10 months has been amongst the most challenging time of my elected career. I think, Madam Speaker, if you would survey any of the 338 members of Parliament, they would say the same. We are experiencing heartbreaking stories, stories of our constituents, of Canadians that are, not only do they have the, their health concerns, but they are also facing financial losses Incredible, mounting financial losses. In the early days, I'd say yes, there was a Team Canada approach. Opposition would challenge some of the programs that would come out, offer solutions, and sometimes the, uh, the information was taken and, 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 and these programs were, were changed. But as we sit today, there are still thousands, tens of thousands of businesses and Canadians that have shuttered their doors or are out of work. And now we're gripped in a second wave, a second wave of this global pandemic. And all we're asking is what the plan is. And where, where's the money? Well, we just witnessed cancel culture ourselves because we did an interview with the PPC. The NDP candidate of Toronto Centre said that they would not do an interview with us because we're helping them. Well, the NDP is a, a or the PPC is a party in Canada. I, just, I never knew that they had racist and maybe some fringe things that they're talking about, definitely. But the leader was a elected member at one point. I, I don't know. Leave your comments below. If I'm overacting, 